Hey everyone, Siri here, and welcome back to another week of Dark Season defense matches. I didn't make any changes to the defense this week, it's been doing pretty well so far, and for the most part I'm only looking at small updates. Her shot in particular will get a solid upgrade after this week, which should help her out a bit. This morning's update notification also made me pretty glad that I've been working with non-turn one setups. This layout shouldn't be affected by the new safety fence, though I am a bit worried it'll make bolt towers more common. If that starts being a major problem, I'll need to try and tweak the setup to help deal with them. Combining Catria with both far and near saves makes the team tricky to attack into safely, while also making them dangerous to try and tank. Bramman is particularly lethal this week thanks to his bonus stats, and underestimating Rajat seems to catch a lot of people off guard. I'm also thinking about tweaking Note's skills to be more support focused. Flashing Blade doesn't do much for her outside of her bonus weeks, and while Menace is a great self enabler, it'd be nice to have more bonuses for her teammates instead. While we did end up having one heartbreaking clean loss at the end of the week that cost me a rank 1 spot, the rest of the week was an impressive wall of successes. That loss does have me thinking about potential improvements, but I think the defense is still holding up really well overall. So let's get to the first match. This match was a fun way to start the week. They brought along a maxed out legendary Dimitri to headline their team. It's always fun to see one of these in the wild, and I do think he's a very solid tank, especially in light weeks with two mythics that can patch up his res. They're also backing him up with a legendary Byleth and Flame, and the combination gives him a lot of extra damage reduction, and also null follow-up, which is usually one of Dimitri's biggest weaknesses, since one of the major drawbacks of Atrocity is that you just can't run null follow-up at the same time. They end up breaking the front line of structures here, and I think they missed the shorter threat range on turn 1, which gets extended by Catria's orders buffs. Since they're too close to the front, this map starts right away, Brightmond gets danced, and even with null follow-up, Byleth isn't tanking a brave hit from Brightmond. And then Felix, appropriately, gets to take down Dimitri. You've shown your weakness. This is my punishment. And losing their front line like that is enough for them to surrender the match and move on. This match was interesting to see. It's pretty rare to see a clean sweep of the offense team, especially when they still have ladders left to work with. They brought along a Brave Hector as their primary unit, and backed him up with a Flame, and a bonus week Leony. Hector and Flame are a pretty classic and strong combination, since the extra damage reduction just stops Hector from taking much damage at all, and lets him tank his way through entire teams. They take a turn here just to clean up the front of the map and get ready to start the fight. And once they're ready, they move Hector into tank, Flane into support, and say go. Baiting this out the turn before the Bolt Tower activates is pretty deliberate too, I think, since it means that they can take full advantage of the damage it does to the defense team once they start moving into its range. Unfortunately for Hector, beating like this means that Rajat gets to sweep him and turn off his counterattacks, which lets Catria move in and finish him off. The rest of the team can't get in range here, and they do decide to keep fighting this out. Flane can finish Catria off, next to the Bolt Tower, before getting danced, and retreating. The 
They do have a bit of a problem here, though, since Leonid's still threatening Felix, which means Bremond rallies him and then gets danced forward to wipe her out. And then once Note moves forward, it gives her shot access to the front line as well. She can't get a whole lot done here, so attacking Nella really just does a little bit of splash damage. They keep pushing here anyway. Flane can take down the last of her shot's hit points. And then she gets danced, and can take down Note as well. And then they pull her back to safety. Unfortunately, at this point, they're kind of out of room to run. I will crush you. And I, uh, Bremlin's iceberg is more than enough to finish Flame off. Soon. Felix jumps forward and then gets danced, which gives him a shot at Nilla. Nilla's actually just bulky enough to survive that, which was pretty impressive. But they're really out of options at this point. Nola can attack Bramland, who isn't being screened by Selkis's near save, but she can't actually finish him off here, even with a dance. And at that point, Bramland can take down Peony, Four Eldigan Wings of Mercy's in to dance him. To get the last knockout. I'll crush you. On Nilla, and close out the match. This match was a lot of fun to see, just for the chance to see a very impressive set of units, starting with this maxed out Robin. He's honestly really, really cool to see. I haven't seen any Robin like that before, and I think he probably does a lot of work with Dragon Wall and Ideal. And they're backing him up with a maxed out Corrin, who's a unit I really want to find the use for. I, I, she was one of my first five stars, and I'd really like to make her work, it's just tricky. And of course, Morgan, who has been doing a lot of work for me in offense weeks. It's a pretty solid team overall, especially with Fallen Edelgard on the side, which helps enable March for both herself and this Fallen Robin. along with enabling a turn 1 transformation for Edelgard if necessary. They move in and start baiting this immediately, which doesn't end as well as they might have liked. As solid as this Robin is, he can't tank a quadding bonus week Bremen without getting flattened. And then, he and Brem gets danced. Note moves forward and gives him Pathfinder, which lets him go after Morgan as well. And while we can't get in range for anything else, that's enough for them to surrender and move on. This was another fun match to see mostly for the unsniped bolt tower that they got to bring along. They've also got a Winter Altina and backed her up with a Diomakaya and Diopini. And together, the three of them make a very powerful combination, assuming you can pick off the duo's entrance first. The one on this setup isn't particularly well protected, so it's not too hard to do. 
and, well, <laughs> the combination of true damage from Micaiah and the extra attack from Peony make Wonderaltina able to take out just about anything she encounters. They take a few turns here just getting set up, breaking the structures in the front, while they move up and get ready to snipe the entrance. They do end up not being able to take advantage of their bolt tower this way, but that's not really the strategy that this team is trying to use in the first place. And Makai can pick it up, and they dance her, and pull back out of range. I spent one more turn just getting into position here, and I think they did actually realize how threatening Felix could be to them. So they use Micaiah to pick him off before the fight begins, and then they can dance Micaiah, which lets her take out Selkius as well. I'm right here. And once they've done that, they can pull back out of range and wait for the team to move. They didn't quite pull far enough back, though. Note moves first and gets danced, and Deltigan's new position lets Rajat jump forward and attack Dogger. And while that doesn't quite finish Dogger off, it also gives Note a jumping point to reach their duo peony. And even though Note's only got one hit point left, that she still has enough damage to take Peony out. They decide to keep going here. They use their duo skills, and that's enough for Micaiah to take down Nilthugan. While Dogger finishes Note off, and Altina moves in to take down Rajat. The tactic room here means that we can't actually just get in range since Bremmund got stuck by it. And once Katri has moved forward, Altina can take her down. They do have a bit of a problem here though, when they send Mila forward and get her stuck on the heavy trap. And that debuff means that Bremmund can still auto double her and take her out. And at this point they have a bit of a problem with just reaching Bremmund, since this is the last turn, and then they run out of time. This match was interesting to see just as a safe ball, and I think these are going to start becoming a lot more of a regular site, assuming that Datamind Banner ends up being the next Hero Fest. They're rounding out their Gustav and Henriette with a Guinevere on this team, which is interesting. It's... she's not necessarily as good of a supporting unit for the save armors as something like a flame would be, but she is a very powerful unit in her own right and can really clean out a lot of the threatening mages that are pretty common on AR defense teams. They end up getting things started right away here, and move Guinevere forward to be the frontline ranged tank, while Henriette stops anything from reaching Peony. Unfortunately, Guinevere can't quite handle Felix. And once Bremen rallies forward, Felix has a pretty easy access to her. And once Note moves, Bremen can pathfind her forward and pick up a pretty easy knockout on Mila. Mm. 
The rest of the team can't catch up, but losing those two is enough for them to surrender the match. This match was a really neat one to see. They brought along a maxed out Brave Edelgard, somewhere supported and all. She's mostly just using her base kit here, but that doesn't make her any less of a threat, especially when she's backed up by this maxed out <laughs> wedding Shauna, somewhere supported as well. Shauna honestly hits in incredibly hard, and it's neat to see her on an offense team after her bonus season's been over with. She's not a common sight, and I should probably be happy about that. Even though she can't really handle Felix very well, normally, they do have a bolt tower that did not get sniped. So they decide to just get things started on the first turn here, move Edelgard in to try and tank, and form up behind her. Unfortunately, that panic banner is not doing Edelgard any favors, and Bramland moves in to take the first shot. And even though Edelgard does survive the first round, 80% damage reduction still isn't enough for her to survive the Iceberg. Sadly from here, even though Bramwind does get danced, he is a single hit point away from surviving Shauna's counterattack and securing a second knockout. And from there the rest of the team can't really get much else done. Felix can jump forward and attack Dogger. But without a triangle attack, thanks to that null follow-up, he's not going to get a lot done. From there, they keep pushing forward. Shauna's very good at cleaning things up at this point, and can pick off Note and Delthkin without any problems. And then the Wings of Mercy Dance comes in, and they pull back. They may have gotten a little bit confident, though, now that Catria was not buffing the entire team, and Rashad gets to sneak in and snipe Peony. They keep fighting this at this point, and the bolt tower damage is enough for Shauna to take Felix down. And then they can have her take down Rashad as well. Which strands Selgius and Catria without really any options. The problem at this point for them is just that Selgius gets healed by that healing tower, which puts them out of reach of the rest of their team and actually forces a surrender. This match was another save ball for the week. Featuring, again, Gustav and Henriette. I wonder if we're going to start seeing Dadu a lot more. It'll be interesting to see. And they brought along a bonus week Chrome to round things out. A lot like the one with Guinevere, Chrome's a great way to help pick off any problematic targets while Henriette and Gustav soak up all of the aggression. And the Tamari air is actually a really great way to help blunt any incoming damage on its own. They take a turn just clearing out the structures and getting ready to tank things from the corner. And once they've done that, they move in and let Krom act as the frontline point. They may have overestimated Henriette's ability to tank a bonus week Bremmund, though. And they can move in and quad down Henriette. Without a card effect, the iceberg's just a little bit too much for her to handle. And then they get stanced. 
and can take down Chrome without any issues. I'm sorry. And with those two down, Felix can jump forward and attack into Gustav. And even with a card in effect, Felix still gets a bonfire, and that's enough to drop Gustav. And with all three of those down, they're kind of out of options. They have air take a shot at Catria before surrendering the match and moving on. This match was a fun chance to see an older unit show up. It's been a while since I've seen a Zealoth set up to tank show up in a defense replay, and I think that his new, well, his dad's, or fine, technically, is actually a great way to help enable him as an Aether Raid's offense unit. The guaranteed follow-ups and follow-up denial really do a lot of work for just letting him carve his way through enemy teams, and backing him up with a young Merrick really helps complement his only real weakness to bulky blues, since Merrick usually doesn't have any problems cutting his way through those, and potentially sniping them before they become a problem at all. They get things started right away here, moving Merrick up, and I think they might have misjudged the threat range, since until the first turn is over, Catria's orders buffs don't show up on that threat range area. Yeah. And, well, Merrick nearly survives Felix, but it's not quite enough. And even though that's their only casualty, it's enough for them to surrender the match and move on. This one was another fun match to see. They brought along a maxed out Lynja, who's always a menace, really. She's been extremely strong since her release last year. And they're backing her up with a very impressive Paula here, who's not someone I expected to see a whole lot of outside of her bonus week. Together, they provide a lot of potential threat to just hit and run with, especially when they're backed up by two dancers, one of which is a Q peony, and a defense stacked Milla. Honestly, I think this team has a pretty easy time carving their way through a lot of things, and the lava tiles aren't really a hindrance to Paula, who gets flipped forward and the adaptive damage lets her curve through Selkios in one turn. I think they were pretty confident about this since Mila's isolation actually works on Eldigan for this first turn. Unfortunately, Rashad ends up getting to Pathfinder forward and find an easy knockout on Peony, while Felix gets to jump over and take down Paula. Even without a dance, the defense does still have some reach, and that's enough for them to surrender the match and move on. This match was a lot of fun to watch, just because it's not often that I see Kronya show up in my defenses. This one's not quite maxed out, but the build is actually pretty similar to the one I use on my own Kronya. And they're supporting her with a Layla with Double Savage Blow. I think it's actually a really cool combo between the two of them. Layla can always attack safely and then swap Kronya forward, potentially, to have a field day with a fully debuffed and Double Savaged Blow enemy team. Unfortunately for them, we do get to snipe their Bolt Tower, which really cuts into Kronya's actual kill potential, and forces them to rely on Layla to help set things up. They take a few turns to do so, to making sure that they pick off this healing tower before they actually start the fight. 
which is kind of important for them since they don't have a Fatal Smoke on their team. And once they've picked it off, they retreat and get ready to start the fight on the next turn. Kranya can't actually attack into Felix safely, but in this case, even though Farsafe disables Layla's swap, it's actually a bit of a good thing, since it lets them just pull Layla back and have her pull Peony back, and retreat out of range of the defense. The team can't quite catch up here, but they do stay very nicely packed together and, except for Selkius, all in range of Felix. Layla continues blinking at Felix and chipping down the rest of his team. But unfortunately, Felix himself is a major problem for them since neither Layla nor Kronya can actually do any damage to him. And they retreat and, I guess, hope for the best here. At this point, though, they're kind of out of room to run, and Bremman starts things off by using Hardy Bearing to carve his way through Kronia. Rajat moves in next, and the Brave Attack lets her just barely take Layla out. Which gives no room to jump forward and quad falter down. And finally, Felix gets to jump over and take down air. Do I look, Mary? And with most of their team down, there's just not really many options for them at that point, so they surrender the match and move on. This match was a bit of a heartbreaker. It came in really late on Monday at the end of the week, and, well, they played it pretty well. They brought along a Byleth and Brave Claude and a Flame to round out their team. And I think this combo is actually really good at supporting Claude, since no follow up and damage reduction are really great ways to let him survive and actually get all of his healing in, in the enemy phase. And Byleth himself is a fantastic unit to work with, since he's really good at cutting through really bulky targets, especially blues like Felix. They take a turn to move in and get into position here, before having Byleth snipe Felix. You cannot stop the flow of time. Felix just isn't quite bulky enough to handle a green mage that hits that hard. And once they've sniped that, they pull back and wait things out out of range. This next part was the one that really struck me as odd. Once Note gets danced, Katri actually rallies Bramamund, which is very strange since Bramamund isn't actually being threatened by any of the members of their team, and doesn't have his action at that point to be able to threaten anything himself. If she'd actually rallied forward the way I think she should have, Zelkius would have been able to get a triangle attack there and bring Note down. As is, he only missed the knockout thanks to Flane. But the way it works out, it's pretty easy for them to start cleaning things up the next turn. And once they've cleared up the front line, it's easy enough for Claude to take down Rajat in the enemy phase, since the rallies actually backfire pretty horribly at this point. Well, again. And Rajat, even though she can shut down the counterattacks for the follow-ups, doesn't really do much when there's nobody else to follow up. Claude can handle Bremen thanks to his self-healing. Another successful 
And from there, Byleth can take down Catria. For a new tomorrow. And with only Eltigan left on the field, it's not exactly difficult for them to finish this match off. They don't even bother picking up the pots, I imagine this is their last match of the week, so they just dance Byleth forward and close out the match. Overall, the defense still held up really well last week, even with that heartbreaker match at the end. It's okay, we still won 10 of the matches, and that last one was very odd, honestly. If it keeps happening, I'll have to figure out exactly what was going on with it, and correct the problem. And I am thinking about ways to try and help Catria move forward instead of backward. But overall, I'm ha still pretty happy with how the defense is holding up. I do have a Discord link in the description if you'd like to hang out and chat, and there's also a Patreon page there if you'd like to help support the channel. As usual, I hope you've enjoyed the video, good luck with your own matches, and I'll see you next time.